Hey there, Heather Boyd Wire here, and welcome to day nine of the 10 day bead soup challenge. Today we're going to be making funky earrings and bracelets with safety pins and stretch magic. Now, if you don't have these, you can also just use wire. I have 20 gauge wire and also 16 gauge wire. I have earring hooks, my tools, and our bead soup. So I have seed bead size and a variety of other bead sizes. If you have a safety pin, you're just gonna go ahead and bead the safety pin. So open it up and then get a bunch of beads, whatever you want. They could be in the same color family or they could be different colors. It really is up to you what you want it to look like. It, sometimes it looks good when it's just a bunch of random colors as well. So you'll have to leave a little bit at the top to hook it back in. So you're gonna go in here and I wouldn't use much more than a six millimeter. You might be able to get away with an eight millimeter. It really depends on the size of your safety pins. These ones are about an inch and a quarter, something like that. And especially like near each end, it's a little narrower. Around the middle, you might be able to get away with doing a slightly larger bead. So this would be the eight millimeter. And then you can go ahead and just bead it up towards the end here. And then, like I said, you need a little bit on the end, almost a quarter inch to close it up. And you're just gonna fill up a whole bunch of safety pins. So once all your safety pins are beaded, you're gonna take about a foot of stretch magic. You need two pieces. And the first thing you have to do is just stretch it so that you get all the extra slack out of it. And then you wanna tie a little knot in the end. Now you can also add like a little pincher thing if you have one. You'll wanna put some beads in between each safety pin. So just start by put a bead on and then take the safety pin and just stick that through the top of the safety pin. If the end is a little small, just get another safety pin and just loosen it up a little bit so it's big enough for your stretch magic to go through. You just push it through like that. And then you're just going to make sure you put them in the same direction with the beads out and put a little spacer bead in between and then just keep putting these on in the same way until you have them all strung up. So once you have that strung up, we're just gonna measure it around your wrist to make sure it's okay. If it's too long, you can always take one or two of them off. And then what we want to do is you can just tie up the end for now so it won't come undone and then take the other stretch magic piece, make sure you've stretched it out first to make sure there's no slack. And then we're just going to tie a loose knot and then we're gonna go down through this way. So we're gonna just put in the plastic cord and just take our bead. These are like little crow beads and then we're gonna stick that one through there. And we're gonna keep going through until we've strung it all up. So once you have them all stringed up, then you have to tie them together. Now that's the hard part because these knots can slip with the stretch magic. So what you do is you're going to start, you're gonna unknot this one or take the plug off if you have a plug on there. Apparently there's two kinds of knots you can do. One is called a figure eight knot and one is called a surgeon's knot. So I'm gonna link up the video of the Stretch Magic Company that made a video about how to make those knots. And in the meantime, I'm just going to make one as per their instructions. So for the surgeon's knot, so what they said is to put this side over that side and then what you have to do is then you have to go over it once and then go over it twice. Okay, so you've gone over that one once, twice, and then take this end and go over this end and around so you're creating a knot so what you have you have a couple twists there one twist there and then you want to pull it tight so make sure that your beads are like pulled pulled together there's no slack there and then you're going to actually pull this quite 
tight in there. Okay, so we're gonna start with that and then we're gonna do the other side. So let's bring this one around and take this and open this up. Now, if you don't have Stretch Magic, you can just do a couple of things. One is you can jump ring them together, which would be a good option. And then the other thing you can do is just run a wire through them, which would be another option. Now we're going to do one on the other side. So we're just going to follow the directions again. So we go over a couple of times around and then we're going to pull that one and then we're going to take this one, the left one over the right one and do a single knot there. So we're going to go in there and then that makes like a sort of a bunched up knot. And if you don't have this stretch magic, if you want to just jump ring these together or run a wire through them, you can do that as well. So we're going to pull this nice and tight. Make sure it's very, very tight so it's not going to come undone. And you're going to just check it to make sure it's okay. And then you're going to snip your ends. So we're just going to snip them. But you want to make sure you pulled it very tight first. So we're just going to snip those ones. And then we'll just snip these ones. I've actually never made one of these uh, bracelets before, so this is a fun experiment. And then you have this cool little safety pin bracelet. I've made it quite small because I have narrow wrists, and it just sits on your wrist like that. So I'm not going to lie, my bracelet exploded when I stretched it too much with the stretch magic. So unless you know how to use stretch magic or you're confident that you can learn how to do it, you can just do the bracelet using wire and now I'm going to show you how to do that. You can just get a piece of thicker wire. This is 16 gauge wire, about 8 inches. And we're just going to do a loop in the end like that. And we're going to form it around. We're just going to make a kind of a round shape around here that would go around your wrist. Now, if you have a bracelet a jig and want to make it an oval shape, you can as well. So we're just going to take that and then we're going to start uh, beating on our safety pins. As before, if you have to make this hole a little bigger, just stretch it out a little bit and just put these all around, alternating with a bead. So once we get them all strung on there, we're just going to add another one of these little crow beads and we want to bend the ends. So just hold them uh, nice and tightly and then cut that to about 5 eighths of an inch. Take your round pliers, bend this out, and then bring this in so it's closed. And now we want to do the same uh, on the bottom, is we're going to get another piece of the 16 gauge wire, cut it, same thing, around 7 or 8 inches. And if you want to make it a little more round, you can make it a little more round. And then, again, make a little loop on the end. So cut this flush, and we're just going to wind that in to make our loop, to close the loop. If you don't have 16 gauge wire, you can use a thinner wire if you need to. So we're just going to loop on one of these beads, and then we want to work our way around here. So just string that in here, get another bead, and then just keep working your way around the bracelet. Just going one by one, careful not to miss one, and we'll go all the way around. If you need to just push this out of the way, if it's in the way, and then just keep putting your beads on and sliding it through the safety pins. So once you have them all attached to the wire, make sure you pull it so it's tight. And then the same thing, we want to make our loop. So hold it in place, cut it to about 5 eighths of an inch. And then take your round pliers and just 
bend it around. So go around and make your loop. Make sure it's like closed like that. Then you can get your flat pliers and then just put the the loops in the direction that you want. And we're gonna add, if you need, a little clasp on there. So just make sure your loops are going this way and that way. I mean, in theory, if the wire is stiff enough, you can just wear it as a bangle. That would totally work too if you made it like that. If the wire was stiff enough, you can just wear it like that. But if you need to, you can put some little hooks on there as well. So I'm just gonna put a couple of jump rings. You can always change the direction of these loops if you just wanna put a single jump ring in there. Uh, you just want this to be able to hook in that direction. So this is that way, this way, this goes that way. And we just stick that one on here, close it up. And then that would just hook right into this loop. So whatever you feel is the best way to finish it off. If you want to make your own kind of hook, that's fine too. Or maybe it's just going to hold its shape if your wire is stiff enough. So we're just going to add this one here and then this one here. And just make sure that your clasp is going to sit the right way because you want it to kind of hook into there. So we're just going to stick that one on the jump ring, close it up. These jump rings are pretty stiff, but that's good for the bracelet that they're stiff. And then this is going to kind of sit over top and just clasp right in there. And that's a nice kind of clean look with the two hooks. If you want a single hook, just put a couple of jump rings on either side. So we're gonna put another one here just because we need it to go towards the center. And then we're going to take another jump ring and just hook these two together. And then put your hook in the middle here. And then that way you only have one hook to do up. Go in there. You might use a toggle clasp too. So that goes towards the middle. And then you're going to need the same thing on the other side. You're going to need a couple of jump rings going towards one jump ring in the middle. So we're going to take this one and hook another one on there. I should really be using two pliers to close these because they're very stiff. I don't have my other flat ones with me, so I'm just going to do it with the with the round ones. They don't always grip well, but it's better than ruining my fingernails. So now we're gonna take this one, open it up, stick it on there, add that one, close that one up, and close this one up. Close that one up. And then we just need one more jump ring in the middle. So we're just going to attach those ones together. Might be better to use a split ring for this one. Use what you have. And then the bracelet would just loop into the middle jump ring like that. So do whatever kind of clasp that you like to hold the bracelet together. For the earrings, it's super simple. Just take a couple of safety pins. They could be different sizes and uh, put the beads on like we did with the bracelet and then just hook it up and twist this around so they're showing to the... So you can make a very simple pair of dangly earrings like that. So the other thing you can do to replicate a safety pin if you don't have one is just take a four inch piece of 18 gauge wire and do a little loop on the end and then measure it to about an inch and an eighth. Just make sure they're always the same size and do another loop around here. 
all the way up and then basically you're just going to bead this with whatever beads you want we've got that one and another seed bead here's an eight millimeter bead and another red one see how far we can go up that's about it and then we want to just measure where the top of the loop will be bring this one around and clip that one there so it's flush push that in and when you put them together for the bracelet you're just going to line up those two loops and string your wire or your elastic cord through both of those loops so thanks so much for watching the video give it a big thumbs up if you liked it be sure to subscribe to my channel for lots more diy wire art and jewelry making videos hit the notification bell to be notified when i go live and when i post new videos and if you'd like to share photos of your wire work be sure to join the wire makers club on facebook and if you'd like to check out my wire work on etsy my husband and i specialize in custom wedding cake toppers and funky jewelry I also have a mailing list, so if you'd like to sign up below to my mailing list, I'll send you my free Wire Art Essentials ebook. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you the next time.